We are going to be ranking all 20 of Minecraft's naturally generated structures, ranging from the smallest of desert wells to the most massive of ancient cities, as well as the newly released trail ruins. We've got four categories to sort them into, essential, rewarding, passable, and useless, and they will be judged on how useful they are to the player. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. The very first structure we have on our list is the igloo. The igloo on the surface doesn't have too much worth or value to it, it's what's below the surface is what is important. Below the surface of an igloo, you can find both a regular villager as well as a zombie villager. And if you know how to utilize that, this is one of the best structures in the game. But they're also pretty rare, so you're not going to be finding this too often, and the value it can give you, it only exceeds so high, so it's, it's going to be going right into the passable tier. Next up is the Nether Bastions, and these guys, <laughs> instant essential tier. Bastions are, are one of, if not the best structure in the game, both towards beating the game, as well as just loot in general. The amount of gold you can get from this, which can then either be traded with piglins or used for other reasons, is insane. Not to mention all the other kind of loot that you can get there. You can get netherite, you can get diamonds, iron, as well as a whole bunch of different nether loot. So these guys, easily S tier. Next up, we have desert temples. So desert temples are one of the OG structures in the game. They've been around for quite a while now, and I believe everyone knows the trap at the bottom, so you're not going to be fooled by it. But if we include the trap TNT, which I believe gives you 9, plus the 4 chests down at the bottom, this is a pretty valuable structure. There's not too many scenarios where you're going to avoid or disregard a desert temple, especially since a lot of the loot inside can be good. But it wouldn't have made it to the rewarding tier without the TNT that you can get at the bottom, that just barely pushes it over for me. Next up, we have the Stronghold. So as I said before, we're going to be judging this off of the value that it gives to the player, not what it leads to, which is the end, of course. And the actual value that the Stronghold gives is not a whole ton. In the chests in the Stronghold, you can get things like basic food items as well as iron. And then the libraries that they have, you can get enchantments there. But generally, because there's not too many of these structures in the world and they don't give a ton of value, it's only going to be going in the passable tier. Next up, we have the Desert Well, which is one of the most useless structures in the entire game. Now, luckily, as of the time of making this video, the 1.20 update is actually on the way and looks to mitigate some of these issues by adding suspicious sand and gravel, meaning you can actually sift through these blocks and using archaeology to actually find something of worth. But generally speaking, and especially as of right now, since the update has not released, it is going in the useless category. Womp womp. Next up we have dungeons, which I think are the oldest structure in the game. If I'm not mistaken, let me know down in the comments if I am. But these are like the standard Minecraft structure. The chests that they give are okay, but it's actually the spawner, which is probably its biggest draw. If it's a skeleton or spider spawner, you can turn those into farms and get insane loot out of them, and even if it's a zombie one, you can still turn it into an XP farm. And for all those reasons, it is going in the rewarding tier. Next up, we have broken nether portals, both in the overworld and in the nether. These guys, uh, they don't provide a ton of loot. They give one chest and a couple of gold blocks if you're lucky. Its main draw is that you can teleport between the nether and the overworld very quickly, and they come in clutch many times, but the actual loot it provides is not super high. Not that there's none, but it's not, you know, it's not among the top. And for that is going in the passable category. Next up, we have jungle pyramids. These have also been in the game for a very long time, and it kind of shows. There is not much loot in here, and it is not very deadly to the player, unlike some of these other structures that either have traps or mobs that defend it. And generally speaking, the, the loot is kind of garbage for how rare they are and what you have to do to get to one. And for that, I'm actually going to be putting it in the useless category. I'm so sorry, Jungle Temple, but I believe a lot of you would agree with me on that one. Next up are the end cities, and these going in the essential tier. End cities provide some of the best loot in the game. Enchanted diamond gear, enchanted iron gear, elytras, dragon's head. End cities overall are, are just generally one of the best structures in the game. They are our end game loot. That's what they provide. And so for that, oh, you know what? I didn't even, I forgot to mention, shulkers are probably the most end game item in all of Minecraft, other than maybe the elytra. And for that, it is going in the essential tier, no question about that. Next up, we have mineshafts. So mineshafts are pretty interesting in that they got an update, I believe 1.18 update, 
but it didn't add anything to the loot table or anything that they can have, uh, unless you value getting chains easily as value. But they got an aesthetic update, which definitely makes them a lot more modernized and generally just more appealing. But again, in this tier list, we are looking at what kind of value it provides for the player. And the value that it does provide is going in the rewarding tier. It's got a decent amount of chests, as well as cave cider spawners and cobwebs, and overall can help you in a pinch if you run out of wood underground. It also allows you to find ores pretty easily since there's a lot of open space. So generally, mine shafts are, are a pretty solid structure. Next up, we have the Nether Fortress, which is also going in the rewarding tier. Obviously, you can get blazes from this, which is probably the most important thing you can grab, but also there are plenty of chests spread throughout a Nether Fortress, which can give you a plethora of things such as diamonds, gold, coarse armor, etc. So overall, just like a mineshaft, a very solid structure. Next up, we have a shipwreck. So just like I mentioned before, we are going to be looking at the actual loot that the structure has itself and not what it can lead to. Shipwrecks and shipwrecks and underwater ruins can both provide maps towards buried treasure, which in itself is one of the best chests in the game, but it is not a part of the actual structure itself. And for that reason, it is only going to be going in the passable tier. They can give decent loot, a bunch of iron, iron nuggets, gold, and food. Sometimes some leather armor or suspicious stew thrown in there, but other than that, they're not too great. Its main appeal is usually finding those maps to treasure chests that it provides. Next up, we have the Ocean Monument. So these guys are heavy hitters, one of the most defended structures in the entire game, if not the most. And with all that defense comes a decent amount of rewards. Obviously, you can get a ton of gold from an ocean monument. Almost more than a bastion, which is quite surprising. But on top of that, if you kill the Elder Guardians, which there are three that spawn in every ocean monument, plus a specific room, you can get a bunch of sponge, which is the only location slash way that you can obtain sponge in the entire game. So I'd have to say, compared to the other structures, this probably has the most unique loot to it, as most other things just have give you gear or tools that progress towards the end game. And for that, plus it's the only way to get Prismarine, I'm going to be putting it in the rewarding tier. Next up we have Pillager Outposts. Now these guys, they only have a single chest, you can actually see it in the photo right there. <laughs> if you look closely enough, they've only got one chest to it, and it's not that good. Its main appeal is kind of just killing the pillagers that surround it, and then also if you're wanting allays, that's how you get them. But other than that, there's not a whole lot to pillager outposts, they're pretty forgettable, all things considered. I wouldn't even be surprised if a lot of you watching this forgot that they even existed. I, yeah, I just wouldn't blame you. But because they do have a tiny bit of value, and a lot of value for very specific players, it is going to be going in the passive tier. Next up we have villages. And oh my gosh, villages are ludicrous. They are insane. The amount of value that villages can provide you is quite literally game changing. Without villages, the entire game of Minecraft would be completely different. The progression system as well as speedrunning would, would be completely altered. With all the trades that you can do, all the loot that it provides you, whether it be gear, iron, food, etc. On no matter what kind of scenario you're in, these structures give you a little trampoline boost in your world towards whatever goal you're trying to achieve. And because of that, they might single-handedly be the best structure in the game. They're gonna go in the essential tier. Next up, we have the underwater ruins. And I mentioned this when we were looking at the shipwreck. The map that you can get in these does not count towards its value on this tier list. The actual value it does provide though is not terrible. It's just sometimes a little bit tricky to get to since they can be defended by drowned that have tridents. Overall, the structure is going to be put into the passable tier. Next up, we have the new 1.20 trail ruin structure. So if you haven't learned about the trail ruin structure beforehand, essentially what you can get here is mostly suspicious sand and gravel with archaeology, and that leads to the treasure that you can get. Now there are also a few blocks that are pretty unique to it where you can get like several types of glazed terracotta, and that's pretty cool as well as unique, but again its main appeal is the archaeology. With that being considered as well as... With that being considered though, since it's still such a a new structure and it can be changed, I'm only going to be putting it into the passable tier. Next up we have the Witch Hut, and yeah, yeah, it, it, it's going there. There are only four structures in the game that don't provide chests, that being the Igloo, Well, Witch Hut, and Trail Ruins, but with the Igloo and Trail Ruins, they both provide value in a different, unique way. These two are just 
uh, pretty much utterly useless. There, there's no reason to even visit one if you come across one. Next up is the Woodland Mansion. For these guys, they don't actually have a ton of chests. They, they have a few, and it can have some decent loot in it. Think, mostly things to do with villagers and emeralds. But its main appeal when a player is looking for a Woodland Mansion is the Evokers. Since when you kill an Evoker, it can drop a Totem of Undying, and that's some very endgame loot. Some very valuable stuff. But to me, it's one item that can only provide two to three of max and the kind of decent chests it provides is not enough to put it in the essential tier so it is going to be going in the rewarding one and finally last but not least we have the ancient city if villages did not exist this would be the best structure in the game it's also the one that makes you feel alive the most because hell when i'm in this I, I get scared to death my first time going into one of these i was absolutely terrified but the loot that i got from it was 100% worth it. Not to mention it's the only way you can get, I believe, two discs, if I'm remembering correctly. Speaking of which, you should go check out my ranking music discs tier list video. Anyways, moving on from that, yes, it is going to be going into the essential tier. No question about that. So there you guys have it. That is my complete Minecraft structure tier list. If you agreed with me, if you disagreed with me, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm looking to continue to grow this channel, so if you're willing to join me, I'm willing to have you here with me for the journey. And with all that being said, I will see you guys next time.